Everyone has a fitness tracker these days. Maybe you got one accidentally when you got a sports watch, or maybe you went out and bought one specifically like a Whoop or an Aura. And they are interesting, tracking things like your steps and your HRV and looking at your sleep data when you wake up in the morning. But how are the pros using these trackers to improve their performance? And how can you use yours to improve your performance? The reality is these days, we know more about what's going on inside our bodies than we ever have before. The invention of wearable technology means we have reams of data about what's going on inside our body at our fingertips all the time. And the investment of time and energy to gather these data is really minimal these days. But just like with any data, it's only as good as what you do with it. And if it's used in the wrong way, it can even be detrimental. For example, waking up and looking at your HRV is only useful if you consider all the factors that might affect your HRV. Otherwise, you might be resting when you could be working hard or pushing when you should be resting. So what should you be looking at and what should you look out for and how can you use these to improve your performance? We spoke to three-time Ironman world champion Jan Fredino about how he is using his fitness tracker to improve his performance. Hi Jan, thanks for joining us. First question, do you use a sleep tracker and do you analyze the data or do you just send it to your coach to analyze? Okay, to be frank, um, most of the data I use is analyzed by my coach. I do look at it uh, from time to time. I try not look at it too close to races because sometimes it just gives you the kind of you shouldn't be doing anything hard today, the day before a race. Um, but you know what? I've, I've had some great experience with the Wahoo Rival Sleep Tracker, which is the watch that I use. And, um, you know, that's where I get my data from and that's where I can kind of track what's working for my sleep patterns and what isn't. All right, so what has changed now that you are using a lifestyle tracker, using your Wahoo and tracking your sleep? What lessons have you learned? Okay, so the first thing that changed for me when I started tracking things is that I'm very conscious of trying to actually get the time in because otherwise you sort of guesstimate, you know, you want to get eight to nine hours of sleep and then you do the calculation in your head. Well, I'm going to bed at 10.30 if I get up at seven, you know, X, Y, Z. Uh, but this thing actually gives you a concrete number at the start of the day and it tells you how long it took uh, for you to fall asleep and how much time you know you spent in REM and, and, and all these kind of different stages of sleep. And that's something that I've become very conscious of actually trying to get to a routine. And in that routine then I've tried to kind of play around with nutrition, different foods, then obviously the classic get off your phone early enough. And the other thing that I've recently started playing with is micronutrition and, um, and, and taking supplements uh, in order to help me with my sleep. And that's where I found uh, Pillar Triple Magnesium to work a treat. Interesting. So you've actually used your sleep tractor to see an actual difference in using supplements like magnesium. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've, I've, I've tried to get a baseline basically to see what, you know, to have a standard and I always hold that for a few days before I introduce something new and then with pillar triple magnesium I've definitely seen an, uh, a decrease in time that it takes me to fall asleep when I take it you know 30 to 60 minutes before going to bed and a better quality in sleep um, I can sleep longer uninterruptedly and you know that's that's kind of like I couldn't give you a percentage right now but literally you know it's gone up for me that I actually make it to nine hours which is you know, still the dream, dream time these days. <laughs> Do you think a few years ago you would have actually believed in a supplement like this, that it's actually making a difference uh, without a sleep tracker to back it up and see the data? Or would you have just dismissed it as a, another snake oil salesman trying to sell you a supplement? I think we're like both of a generation, you know, like we used to think drinking on your bike is weak and supplement makes nothing but expensive urine, you know, and that's that's kind of always been the motto. And, and, and I think a certain bit of skepticism is actually quite appropriate because there's just a lot of people selling a lot of stuff out there. So why not, you know, go out there, try the stuff and and actually test it, see if the, the claims people make are, are truthful. And you know, that's that's definitely been one of the one of the big sales pitches for me to actually join Pillar because the one thing is, you know, having trust in a supplement as a professional athlete. So that's you know, that that's that's hugely important. But also, you know, they can sell you anything and if it isn't helping, well, 
then why are you adding it to your body? So definitely trackers and, and objective measures have helped me believe in, in, in the supplement. Interesting. Thanks, Jan. Thanks for taking time to talk to us today. Jan's lesson is actually something we can all take from this. For the first time, everyone can track actual differences from small interventions, such as taking magnesium or other micronutrients. We should probably pause here and explain what we mean by micronutrients and why you should be paying attention to them. We're all familiar with our macronutrients, that is carbs, proteins, and fats. They're discussed a lot in endurance sport. What to eat, how much, and when. And then bolted onto that discussion is a brief mention of vitamins and minerals. We all know they're important and maybe we even take a multivitamin supplement daily to, you know, fill in any gaps. We know we're probably flushing most of this multivitamin down the toilet in expensive urine, but it's so much easier than taking specific supplements every day. Or maybe you do take specific supplements because you've been told you have a shortage of something, a deficiency in something like iron or calcium or magnesium. Unfortunately, when it comes to vitamin and mineral supplements, everyone is a little jaded. We're bombarded every day with adverts for magic pills that can fix anything and everything. And if we took them all, we'd be taking handfuls of pills every day and spending most of our paycheck on supplements. But most of these supplements and the ads that spout them actually come from a good place. We do need these things. They're important, vitally important. And as athletes and triathletes, we're asking our body to perform at above normal levels, which means they become more important still. We spoke to world champion coach Dr. Dan Plews about what he's learned about micronutrition and what it can do for his athletes. Dan, you're an HRV expert. Uh, thanks for joining us here today. We're going to talk about HRV and also sleep tracking and how you can use it to improve your athletes and how athletes can use it. Yeah, yeah thanks for having me on, James. Um, so, the, I mean, we're in a we're in a world today where the wearable technology is really advanced and, you know, we can wear wearable technology nearly all the time when we sleep, when we're exercising. So things like Aura Ring and Whoop. And it allows us to kind of take a good insight into how the athlete's tracking in terms of the training adaptation. And usually we call it whether they're tracking positively or negatively to the training. And often the negative adaptation comes from a variety of different things. So for example, often we see poor sleep and poor, poor um, nutrition can often mean that they're not actually adapting in a positive way. And luckily the wearable technology can really help us see that in, um, in a very objective manner. So you can see that, but how do you prescribe the, the remedy for that? Is it, is it literally like go to bed more early? or is there other things you can do? Yeah, there's, there's lots of other things you, you can do. I mean, I always think that when it comes to athletes and training, there's three pillars of recovery, right? There's sleep, there's training nutrition, and then there's training periodization. But when it comes to sleep specifically, there's a, you know, we always talk about sleep hygiene. So that means that we're looking to do certain things at certain times that really promote sleep. So one of the main things, for example, would be that you're picking the same wake and sleep time is really, really important to uh, make sure you, because that really helps you with your sleep. Getting light at the right amount of times to set your circadian rhythm in the day. But we can also use things like some micronutrients like um, triple magnesium from Pillar Performance, for example, that has been shown really that magnesium really does promote sleep. And the, the great thing about the wearable technology is that you can really see it. So if you're wearing your, some device that's tracking your sleep efficiency scores, generally when you're taking such supplements, it's really good because you actually have the objective measure to see how your sleep is getting better. And of course, if you're sleeping better, you recover better, you can train more, you can train more consistently, and then you're gonna be um, racing and training that a little bit better. So you mentioned uh, magnesium and how that makes a big difference to sleep quality and quantity. Uh, and that's obviously something that I think people are gonna immediately after this video be thinking about. What other macronutrients are important? I mean, we can talk about the, the macronutrients, but what other macronutrients are things that athletes particularly yeah, should be looking at? I mean, when it comes to, I think every coach and then it knows that they say, oh, what, what's, the, what's the key to racing well? And it's consistent performance, right? Consistent training is really, really key. So there's a, like, there's a number of micronutrients that can actually really help you get that consistent performance. So just to name a few things like calcium, for example, taking calcium at the right times has been really, as the research has shown to really reduce bone stress injuries in athletes, which we know is very common, particularly in, in triathletes doing heavy training loads. Um, fish oils, for example, the omega-3s, 
reducing inflammation, can help reduce some of that muscle soreness, and therefore, you know, you can train that a little bit more, that little bit more consistently. And if you're backing up your training and you're getting to the start line healthy in one piece, the rest will take care of itself. There you go. You heard it here. Micronutrients can be the difference. There's actually nothing revolutionary or groundbreaking in what Dr. Plews says there. We all knew we needed these things, and now you can just track their effect and how they're improving performance. But this is where many people get stuck, actually implementing these lessons in their daily life. Carpet bombing the problem, simply taking handfuls of multivitamins every day, is not only expensive, it can be counterproductive. While most excess vitamins will simply be flushed away down the toilet, some can actually accumulate in your system and reach toxic levels. And besides, we should be getting most of what we need from a healthy, balanced diet. So what micronutrients should you be topping up on, and where are you going to get the most bang for your buck? According to the experts, here are some key takeaways. You should supplement with micronutrients. While you can get everything you need from a balanced diet, most of us don't. Either because we're too busy, or because we simply don't get enough variety in the foods we eat. Quality of what you take is important. Not all supplements are created equally, and especially for performance, the government RDAs may not be relevant to you. Timing of what you take is important. When you take your supplements can affect the absorption and effectiveness. And while some supplements complement each other, other supplements can have a detrimental effect on the absorption and effectiveness of other supplements that you've taken. Well, this has been a long investigation to get us to a fairly simple point. Wearable tech, by tracking changes in sleep and recovery, has shown us that it's time to focus a little bit more on our overall health and our macros, or micronutrition. For optimal absorption and effectiveness in your micronutrition, you should follow a daily schedule that looks something like this from the experts at Pillar Performance. On an empty stomach in the morning or with breakfast, take some probiotics and B vitamins. Also with breakfast, consider a multivitamin and some omega-3s. Later in the day, perhaps with lunch, supplement with vitamin D and calcium, together for optimal absorption. And finally, with or after dinner, take iron, vitamin C and magnesium. Well, we hope this video has helped clear up some of those muddy micronutrition waters and also shown how powerful these wearable trackers can be when you're tracking your sleep and nutrition. Thank you to Jan Fredeno, Dr. Dan Plews, and of course, Pillar Performance for helping us make this video today. Do you track your sleep and recovery using a wearable? And do you take micronutrition supplements? Let us know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like this video if you've enjoyed it and subscribe to GTN so you don't miss any of our future videos. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.